You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Tasty Trade. You take the unbeaten path. You root for the away team. You wear shorts in winter. You don't put ketchup on a hot dog. So why wouldn't you trade with a broker that lets you go your own way? Tasty Trade. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose. You trade. Chart moves with hundreds of custom indicators. Stare at the candles till you see them in your sleep. See it. Click it. Trade it. On mobile, web, or desktop. Supported by a trade desk that knows how traders think. The data, the tools, the knowledge. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker, dealer, and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. And now, get ready to hit the auction block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back. Back on the network, back ready to rock out for another uh, truncated broadcast week. It is a holiday week here at the end of the day. Not a monster, not making people come in to do shows on Thanksgiving or the day right after Black Friday. Of course, not going to make you listen. I'm not going to force you to. you got family to see. You've got deals to get. But, of course, we have a lot of archive stuff there for you to keep you company throughout the rest of the week. If you're kind of just done dealing with family at the end of the day. What's the old saying? Fish and guests stink after three days. Uh, my name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as on the network. A couple of things remind you of the top of the show. If you like what you hear, throw a like, a star, a comment. Remember, also throw some love the way of the folks who keep supporting the content so you can keep getting a bunch of free content coming your way and have for nearly 18 years now. In the case of this episode, of course, it's coming to you courtesy of our friends over there at TastyTrade, tastytrade.com slash podcast. The place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. Tell them we sent you. Tom and company will be happy to hear about that. And then, of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to get awesome pro Q&As, options oddities, all kinds of fun, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Place to go. You get your own super cool podcast feed, as well as, of course, all kinds of giveaways, all kinds of fun as well. Speaking of fun, it's time to have a little bit of fun to kick off our broadcast week. I am joined by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussauds who is just rolling in from the mobile office, as well as, of course, the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. I have not yet crunched the official numbers, but he has some digging to do to get out of his hole. Unfortunately for him, he's also beset by technological woes. Someone took out a telephone pole near him, so he has no internet, so he's beaming in by the magic of telephone. So uh, we'll see if he can hear the good goodies. But gentlemen, put on your 80s trivia caps because at the end of the day there can be only one winner here we go all right listeners here we go back to the 80s we go the halcyon days of the 80s my little intro to this segment was a little bit of a clue of what we're talking about today 
Uh, some might say an iconic film. It kind of bombed at the box office when it came out back in 1986. But if you're like me and a bunch of other kids who grew up in the 80s, this became a cult classic. It, it also spawned what is perhaps the worst sequel in cinematic history. Talk about going from the highs to the lows. The sequel to this movie, infamous, legendarily bad. But the first one, amazing. Also spawned a TV series, kind of fun. It featured, of course, listeners, this film, Immortal Swordsman, clashing throughout eternity. The only way they could win was to chop off the other swordsman's head and get their power. Hence, the catchphrase of the film and of the TV series, of course, at the end of the day, everyone had chopping chair's heads off until there was only one left. The tagline, there can be only one. Famous tagline from this film. Gentlemen, Mr. Rock Lobster, Mr. Uncle Mike, immortal swordsman battling until there can be only one. Batsman Highland, I can't remember. Oh, you, 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 you didn't buzz, but yes, that is right. Yes, the Highlander, yes, you got it right. What, what did you say? I said the Scotsman Highlander. Okay, I cannot remember yeah. the Highlander. I okay, yeah, you were, you were 90% of the way there, and Uncle Mike's not typing anything, so, so you get it by default, sir. So there you go. I like it. All right, all right. Rock Lobster, one point for the Highlander. Have you seen that? Yeah, have you seen, I haven't seen that movie in forever, but I need to watch it again. Great film. I, I, I saw the and you know what? It was a great TV series. It was. It was a great show. It was a great show. I like that show, too. Changed up the main character. Connor for the movies, Christopher Lambert, Duncan for the TV show. But uh, yeah. other than that, uh, just a great, great. All of a sudden, he was gifted in martial arts, too, for the TV show, Ooh, which is kind of funny. All right, let's go for a little bit of half-point bonus just for fun. A uh, pretty famous Nyon legendary rock band did the soundtrack. For the Highlander, which is kind of funny when you see it's kind of a low, a low budget British film, but uh, it gives you a clue maybe as to what the band was. But a, a very well known, they made a big epic biopic about them a few years ago, won some Academy Awards. What rock band did the soundtrack for the Highlander? It's up to anybody. Oh wow! Uh, I'll go with Dokken. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't. I can't even guess. I'm just trying to get the soundtrack. I can't I, even guess. I should give you a bonus point, Uncle Mike, for finding a way to work Dokken onto my network for the first time ever. <laughs> uh, I, that just when I say high-powered, legendary British band who powered a biopic to Oscars, you come up with Dokken. <laughs> I love that. The only Dokken song I even know is the Nightmare on Elm Street one, the Dream Warriors. That's actually a fun tune. But uh, outside of that, I couldn't even name a Dokken song if you put a gun to my head. That is funny. You, you, sh you should almost get a bonus point just for making me laugh. But that's not how the game works. No, it was Queen. Queen, of course, oh, did the Queen. soundtrack. A bunch of songs oh, uh, right. yeah, for yeah. the Highlander. It was also the theme song for the TV show as a result. So, yeah, Queen uh, lighting it up. So, Rock Lobster maybe digging out of the hole a little bit, getting a, getting a point. All the Rock Lobster fans will be happy. You're at least making it competitive. Uncle Mike gets a, gets a pretend half point for Dokken because that brought a smile to my face. <laughs> As we keep on rolling and go into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. Man, I'm still I'm still just a buzz by Dokken. I'm completely thrown for a loop. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of some Dokken songs. <laughs> You're killing me, killing me too. So, all right, let's see. Is this market killing us today, listeners? The answer it's kind of a kind of an interesting one. We started out of the gate hot, super hot, weirdly hot. You know, given all the things we were talking about last week, some of the things that are kind of weighing on the market right now. Of course, we've got more information about Trump's appointments. And uh, like them or not, the market seemed to like them early on, maybe just the certainty therein, because the market started out hot out of the gate, the Dow shooting up, the S&P shooting up. I think at one point, the Dow was up over 400 points. Uh, the S&P was up quite a bit as well. We got up uh, north of the 6K level. Hint, hint, that'll come back to our question of the week in a little bit. And then kind of promptly gave it right back up, which has kind of been the narrative of late. We kissed 6,000 and then just fall right out of bed. Got back below 59.70. Uh, kind of rallying back as we're from that low, at least. Not still back to where we were this morning as we're kicking off the show. S&P up a quarter of a percent. Uh, the Dow is still up nearly a full percent, about eight-tenths of a percent. And uh, the NASDAQ up about a quarter of a percent. And just because it's fun, let's throw in our old pals, the small caps. And they got the bit in their teeth today 
up nearly 2%, 1.9% out there. So looking pretty hot. What else has been pretty hot out there today has been VIX. Just watching watching the range on VIX Cash. By the way, listeners, you ever mistype VIX into your platform and you get the uh, Spanish language streaming service? <laughs> Always cracks me up. <laughs> How many confused volatility traders are over there at that platform? And vice versa. How many confused Spanish language people looking for a little content are suddenly getting quotes on a vol product? You know? It's uh, strange bedfellows there in the vol space. Uh, but VIX Cash has been vacillating around quite a bit today. We got a low of about 14 and a half, which was kind of right out of the gate as we're rallying hard, vol kind of getting annihilated. Then people thought the better of it, said maybe that's a little bit too cheap given what we're seeing out there. Started to firm us back up. Got up to about, oh, 15 handle. And actually, right before the show, we got up to about, looks like, 15 and three quarters. When we kicked off the show, it was right around 15 and a half. Puts it down still from the Thursday show, about one and a quarter points, but looking firm, looking frothier than it was this time even earlier this morning. Uh, VVIX also looking frothy at about a 92 right before showtime. Puts it down about 10 points. It has ticked up a little bit now since the show started. Let's go up to about a 94. So that puts us down about eight points from the Thursday show. But a lot to unpack. Let's go out a rare moment, listeners, when I can toss to the winner of our 80s trivia block. And it is an Uncle Mike. It is the Rock Lobster. Mr. Rock Lobster, if you have any enduring memories of the awesome, dare I say it, fantastic 80s film, uh, The Highlander, and the soundtrack, and the TV show, and everything else, have at it. And B, were you like me? Did you go to theaters? Did you drag a bunch of friends to theaters when Highlander 2 came out? And partway through that film, did you turn to them and apologize profusely? Because it's one of the worst things ever committed to cellular. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I remember Highlander 2. I think I, I just watched it on cable or whatever. And it was like, it was so bad. Like, it was terrible. It is. There is nothing redeeming. It's hard to say that about a film with Sean Connery. There is nothing redeeming about that movie. It is horrible. I mean, and what's funny is, is when you watch the... The, the episode of that kind of uh, I don't I don't remember the name of the actor. It's kind of some studly Scottish dude. Uh, I thought he'd be the next James Bond, actually, but I guess he didn't. Christopher played, Christopher guess, Lambert, baby, he was actually yeah. French. Yeah. Oh, uh, there was Lambert, but the guy who did the TV show, like they never did a bad episode of the TV show. It was oh, the fun. T the TV show guy. Yeah, what was his name? Duncan McLeod was the character's name. I'm blanking. Yeah, Adrian <laughs> Adrian Paul. There we go. Bam. Adrian Paul. That wow, was a deep job. cut. Look at that. But, Dockin and Adrian Paul, deep cuts today. Yeah. But uh, I just, I remember he always had like a hot sidekick and, um, um, but you know, she lived forever too. And, and what, what a concept, just keep living forever. What the heck? And then you have to cut all everybody's heads off. That's the best part. You, you have a choice. Do you want to live forever? The answer usually is yes. But then the second you say yes, hundreds of immortal swordsmen are coming to kill you. <laughs> so you, your head off. you might not last very long once you, once you get these, this immortality. So it's a bit of a gift, bit of a curse. That's why the yin and yang of it, sir, is what makes it so appealing. Yes. Yeah. So I, all I say is I, I would dare say that this was one of the rare times where the TV show was actually better than the, the initial movie. Um, but I never, was there books? I guess there must've been books about this. Um, there probably were novelizations, but it started as a movie. It was a movie first. Oh wow! It was uh, it was uh, anyway. So that's uh, that was definitely a ninety staple of TV viewing for me, I believe. Um, wow, it's hard to believe that was so long ago. <laughs> anyway, um, as far as the markets go, uh, yeah, there, I think you know there we didn't have World War Three this weekend, so there was some. Uh, we were happy about that. The uh, Trump appointments are going okay. President, vice president, not quite around. So we got to, I get, what is it like? It got this like two, two months off until inauguration. Um, so, and I also, I kind of, <coughs> Mark and I were talking about this, like basically uh, every big tech company, if they're making money, they're just giving it to NVIDIA. And uh, that's kind of what it feels like. So NVIDIA, I feel like they're like taking everybody's punch bowl at the party, although the stock is down now. Um, and it's quite possible that traders, investors are like, wow, there's other stocks in the market besides NVIDIA. And that's kind of I, it's kind of what it feels like right now, um, that there are other stocks that trade at relatively low multiples. Uh, and, and you have to look historically, you know, a 
historically, the reality is the companies that have left, left that have led the next wave of technology have led the market. You could go in the 1800s, you could go railroad stocks, and then there was woohoo technology stocks back then, telephone, electric power, telegraph. Like, okay, you know, these are like, this is not, at least since I would call like modern investing, you know, post Buttonwood agreement. Like this is how things kind of go. And then, you know, that one leader kind of falls back a little bit because everybody else plays catch up. I don't think everybody has got really caught up to NVIDIA. It's just, you know, how big, I think mostly at this question is how big can it get? And I think those are reasonable questions. It's three, you know, it's not very far away from a $4 trillion market cap. Um, Apple has gotten to that point where the revenues aren't growing a ton anymore. It still makes a ton of money. You know, it's still a massive revenue company. It's just, you know, how much does it grow? It still still throws off huge earnings. Um, but like what multiple does the market assign? I think it's NVIDIA has like just gotten to that. It's a victim of its own success. So tremendous company, tremendous products, tremendous growth. But like in, you know, nowadays with Reddit, and everything else, people are climbing on. It's like kind of like they're climbing on a Palantir and giving it a hundred billion dollar valuation already. Tremendous products, tremendous company, young, right? They're like everybody's just trying to get it to a trillion dollars already. <laughs> and, you know, it only has like three billion in revenue, so it's like whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it used to take a while uh, for these companies to grow. So I think what's happening, it just at least from what I see, is you know. Some of the big tech that led AI, they got a pretty high valuation. The market is now in the show me state. And then for all the other stocks that will eventually benefit from AI, benefit from, you know, essentially more productivity, which is kind of how it works in the U.S., uh, especially for stocks in the S&P 500. Um, you know, I think some money is starting to look at other stocks now. Uh, reasonably. So, and I think that's where we find ourselves. We have a new president. Um, overall, you know, it, it feels like the mood is okay. Uh, probably better since he was elected in 2016. Somebody has, you know, unless of course we don't have that COVID thing again, but people will be uh, a, a little more wary this time than they were the last time. Um, but, but for now, um, there is, plus there's that, uh, I believe you're seeing more uh, on government waste and inefficiency, maybe doing something about knocking the deficit down. And these are, I think, positive things, positive things with uh, more certainty, generally leads to lower vol and stock prices going up. And as long as this Ukraine thing does not keep rearing its head, um, I think stocks still want to go up a little bit. So. And, I, and that is where we find ourselves today. But I'm always interested in hearing Mr. Tussauds' take on the subject. Well, first off, Mr. Uncle Mike, if you have more to add on your beloved Dokken, <laughs> I'm, st <laughs> I'm still laughing about that. that was, I'm going to be off, out of sorts for the rest of the week because you threw Dokken at me. But uh, yeah, is there anything to add on that? I'm guessing you don't have much on the Highlander. Have you ever even seen it? And then B, uh, what's catching your eye? And uh, started out raging Uncle Mike type of day, now cooling off a bit. Yeah, so uh, no, I, I'm the Highlander is definitely a part of the '80s that I was not a part of. So uh, kudos to the Rock Lobster for taking advantage of that today. And uh, uh, so my my daughter actually witnessed the trivia contest today, and uh, so I had to hang my head in shame. She left before I could even talk about docking. So um, yeah, it, it's a sad day here in the Tucson house for for where we're at because uh, they're on Thanksgiving break. Wanted to show my daughter what the the option block is all about, because uh, she's she's not old enough to go to the listening parties that we have in St. Charles for the show. But uh, but yeah, Andrew's the man today. And then in terms of Dokken, I mean, uh, their their songs uh, "In My Dreams" are, is one of their big ones. Uh, and then "Alone Again" is another one of their big songs. So uh, that's what they have. I and just so pulled I figured, up Dokken. Guess what song they said is the number one under Google. The Google. What did they bring up? The number one song for Dokken. 
I just uh, I'll say it. alone again. It's the only one I know. Dream Warriors from the Nightmare on Elm Street. That's the only Dokken song I know. So oh yeah, Dream Warriors. Google and I clearly agree on what is clearly the best. Yeah, Alone Again is way at the bottom here. And then they have In My Dreams number two, and then a bunch of other songs I've never heard of. I guess I need to dive deep into the Dokken oeuvre, sir. Maybe I'll do that while you're talking. There you go. But yeah, I was I was thinking that. Uh, why not take a flyer? You never know. And that was the first band that came into my head. So uh, that's where we're at with it. So wasn't expecting to talk, <laughs> to talk in depth about Dokken today. They were definitely not one of my all-time favorite 80s bands. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, um, here we are. So in terms of the market, uh, yeah, we actually had a big start for the day today in that uh, we actually did make new all-time highs. I was all excited but I uh, can't really say it now because we're not at all-time highs anymore, but we're still up on the day. So the s and is still up 0.2% uh, on the day. So we're at uh, 5983. So we are uh, 37 points away from all-time highs again. So can't complain too much about that if you're a bull. Uh, the things that I'm, real, that I'm seeing that uh, I think are pretty interesting are that uh, precious metals are just getting shellacked today. Uh, gold and silver down 3% of the day. Bonds are getting catching a bid. Uh, we have corporates up roughly 1% on the day. The 10 years up roughly 1% on the day. So uh, that's definitely a good thing if you're a bond bull and a metal bear. Uh, so with that, the mini metals who we've talked about on the show before, they're probably not doing that well today. So with that being said, uh, now that we've gotten away from all the silliness, uh, some things with which I am watching right now on the individual names, uh, we do have uh, JP Morgan is continuing to do really well. It's back above the 250 mark. Uh, so banks are definitely benefiting from this bull from the bull coming to town today, JP Morgan's actually up a uh, little over half percent on the day. Uh, some other stocks that I'm keeping an eye on as we are looking at this, of course, is the Rock Lobster and said NVIDIA. Uh, that is down 3% on the day. Netflix is down 3% on the day. Uh, maybe they got their streaming going from the from the, uh, the fight. Who knows? But uh, seeing that and then uh, Apple, of course, is up 50 cents on the day, still holding the 230 mark. And then uh, just after Disney's earnings last week, they're still at the 115 level. So uh, looks like we have a lot of shifting going on in this market from where we stand at this stage. But uh, for the time being, uh, I wasn't expecting a ton of movement this week. There typically isn't on the holiday week that we have. But uh, earlier in the day, there was movement. Now there's not. We'll see how we end it. By the way, I heard in the interim, since we talked about him, Uncle Mike, the mini metals have now transformed into an all dock and cover band. So oh, they're that's tearing exciting. it up. I think they're coming to that theater in St. Charles soon. So get your tickets now. Mini the Arcata? Metals, mini metals, all docking all the time. <laughs> Brett Michaels has performed at the Arcata in St. Charles. Not a lot of people know that. But once the mini metals roll through town, then your theater is legit. That they they christen it and make it official out there. Is it an official day in the markets? By the way, listeners, before we get there really quickly, just for some extra fun on this truncated holiday week, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, you put it out to our audience. We said, uh, given what we just said, Highlander 2, just atrocious. I'm hard-pressed to think of a worse sequel of all time. Uh, right now, we said we put it out to our audience, and in the early blush, 100% are saying no, and we have a write-in so far, Mr. Rock Lobster, for Caddyshack 2 being the worst sequel. Um, that was the first one that came to my really? head. You know, I don't remember hating. I guess because I didn't, I wasn't as in love with the original cat as everyone else was. So I wasn't as depressed. And I, I remember thinking, eh, it's not great, but it, it, it was all right compared to the first one. Highlander 2, the drop, Highlander 1, the drop off to Highlander 2 is, is just epic. It's, case studies can be done about how bad that film is. So, uh, yeah. But there we go. We have a ride in for Caddyshack 2. That's a flash poll, listeners. So it's only going to be going for a little bit. So. Uh, we'll get in there, add options, and make your voice heard as we go around the horn and see what's lighting up our tape out there today. Is it a banger day in VIX? Op you know, VIX has been kind of asleep the last few sessions. Second half of last week in particular, it didn't really do much. In fact, on Thursday's option block, I had to kind of restart our, our system a couple of times to make sure we were getting live quotes because VIX is only at about 150,000 contracts. Everything else was putting up record numbers. So it's kind of weird and we're not quite that bad today, but still pretty sleepy in VIX land. Only 319,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the ADV 895 out there. The top dog today, 37,000 of the DS 15 puts out there today. Listen, if you wonder what they're going up for, 
They're going up for prices between 71 and looks like 89 cents. So a little bit of a range out there. You like them? Are you a buyer or seller in that price range, listeners? Uh, somebody putting up a whole bunch of them out there today, but that's really kind of about it. Spy, though. Again, another one of these weird days. Spy just on fire. Fully 2 million more contracts on the tape right now than we expect. We usually expect about 4.35 million. We're at exactly 6.35 million right now. So Spy lighting the world on fire while VIX kind of just still half asleep. 7.51 is the ADV for Spy. Probably going to get there by the end of the show, listeners. The S, same deal, 2.15 million. So the Spy and the S hot out of the gate. The ADV, 3.2 million. And the VIX again. VIX and the SPX should be somewhat correlated, yet we're not seeing that right now, which is kind of kind of fascinating. Small caps, my goodness. Somebody uh, somebody forgot to lock up the barn and small caps got loose, listeners. They are running rampant. One and a half million contracts on the tape already out there in small caps land. If you're saying that sounds like more than the ADV, you are correct. The ADV, 1.43 million. So they're already blowing the doors off. By the way, the big dog out in small caps today, 73,000 of the 244 calls, uh, these are expiring today. By the way, we're at about 243 and a half right now. So these are these are threatening. Any moment right now, we could break through these. My goodness, people come into play. And so let's just see. Let's just see. What are those trading for? Uh, they're trading for prices from around 13 cents. Looks like all the way up to 40 cents. Some actually traded. We did some actually traded 40 cents not too long ago. So man, if you're feeling the animal spirits of small caps, get in there. 244 is lighting it up, followed by 61,000 of the 240 puts also expiring today. But then right below it, we have a couple of slots below it. We have 45,000 of the D's 226 puts. So once again, small caps kind of all over the place and just on fire today. Speaking of on fire, the Q's saying, don't forget about me. 3.2 million contracts on the tape for the Q's, the ADV 4.17. So again, we could almost be there by the end of the show today as well. So things are popping off. In the indexes, is it the same in the single names, listeners? Well, I guess you tuned into the right show to find out. And you know what? It's it's decent. It's 334. I would definitely call that more than respectable. It's not quite the 460 we were on last week when things were just lighting the world on fire. But still, 330, we've been at 250. We've been at 150 on this show at this time. So 334, certainly more than respectable. That gets us to Rivian. Rivian popping hard, 1156, up about a buck 30 or almost 13%. Just today, so Rivian on the old rampage. Wow, and they're still they're still down for the year. Don't get me wrong; they're still down nine and a half bucks or forty five percent since January. But looking a little bit better, they got down to eight and a quarter. But that was in April. Uh, there looks like their recent sell off got down to right about ten bucks in October, and then they bounced off that. So up about a buck and a half from there, including a lot of that coming today. <laughs> they were at ten forty eight this morning. So there we go, listeners. Rivian popping. Uh, looks like there's uh, they have a settlement with uh, Tesla going on out there. So there we go. When in doubt, when you can't make money the old-fashioned way, make money in lawsuits. <laughs> Why not? Rivian, number 10, 334,000 contracts, listeners. I do see more, anecdotally, I do see a lot more Rivians on the street here in Chicago. So it does seem like, again, anecdotally, they're starting to pop up on my radar more. I mean, obviously, you see Teslas everywhere. There's a Tesla distribution center about a block away, so that's going to... That's going to skew the data somewhat, but <laughs> there's no Rivian Center anywhere near here, and uh, they're starting to pop up more and more. I tweeted out a photo, I think, about a month or two ago of two of them parked next to each other on the street, two rare unicorns side by side. Folks kind of freaked out, which was fun. Uh, number nine, AMD, 140.85, up about two and a half bucks or 1.8%. Doing 351,000 contracts today, so AMD looking robust, looking green. Keeping it in the A, tech names, this is the Amazonians, number eight, 370,000 contracts, $200.70, up about three and a half bucks or about 1.8%. Again, good for the number eight spot, number seven, micro strategy, 398,000, off 1470, about three and a half percent, trading 407 and a quarter. I guess folks don't want them to buy their Bitcoin for them anymore. <laughs> I'm going to get some micro strategy bull writing in very angry at me. Uh, but number seven, 300, they do more than buy my Bitcoin for me. <laughs> Number six, it's the fruit company. 470,000, 230 and a third, up about half a buck or about a quarter of a percent. Number six, the fruit company. By the way, I'm joking. We have kind of the best audience in the biz. You folks are awesome. Very few kind of of those really, uh, let's say, people who take it personally. <laughs> Most of you are, are I'd say 99.9% .9 of you are pretty awesome folks and have been for nigh on 18 years. So I thank you. Uh, number five, it's Palantir. Rock Lobster is talking about them, 64 and three quarters. 
I've been joking about them of late as well. Always helps to have the the VP firmly in the pocket of a firm. That firm's looking pretty good right now. Uh, again, up a half a buck. Also added to the S and P not that long ago. So all these things conspiring to give them the run. Again, I've said it before. I was getting run over on selling ten and eight puts in this name not that long ago. So sixty five bucks is quite the sea change. Number five, five hundred thirty eight thousand contracts. Number four, it's Mara twenty six eighty one up about eighty cents today, or about three point three percent. So Mara, maybe are they going to make those? 30 puts, 30 calls, excuse me. Are they going to start threatening? They got up to 28.89 today, listeners. So they're kissing. They're trying to make that guy make his money on those Jan 30s. They've been open forever. Better part of a year at this point. Uh, so he's probably still deeply in the hole on those. But, you know, you get to a 30 handle, he might have a case to at least maybe scratch those. Got close to that this morning, 28.89. If you want more of that goodness, I will be joined by our buddy, Mr. Greg, on the Crypto Rundown coming up in a little bit because last week was a banger week. The week that everyone's been asking for all year, ever since January when they approved the freaking ETFs. Everyone's like, where are the options? Finally got them in our hot little hands last week, listeners. I bit flying fast and furious. Lots of volume going up out there. Even if you're a crypto skeptic, who the hell cares? All the underlying needs is volume and volatility. And guess what? You can trade it as an options trader. And there's a ton of that out there. So if you're looking for another name to trade that gives you those two Vs, volume and volatility, I bit certainly not the worst choice out there. Uh, number four, we've got Mara 584. Uh, then we jump up quite a bit to number three, good old SMCI. This one, man, they had the headsman's axe coming for them about a week ago. <laughs> and now, let's see, in the past five days, they're up 35.5%, nearly 10 handles. 36.97 today, up nearly four bucks or 11.5%. So good old super micro. <laughs> Man, what a rampage. 911,000 contracts, SMCI. Number two, it's the car company, a.k.a. Tesla, 1.45 million. Let's see, uh, 349.36, off about 320, or not even 1% out there today. They've been on the rampage, threatening 200 not that long ago. Now over 300 bucks. And the big dog, NVIDIA, 3.6 million, 137.5, off about 4.5 bucks, or 3.15%. Interesting you should mention how everyone's paying NVIDIA these days. Kind of the, It's the NVIDIA tax. I was talking to someone at the FIA conference last week, someone on kind of the VC venture kind of investing space. And they made the exact same point back in the dot-com bubble. They were saying everyone was tithing to Amazon and all these infrastructure names uh, to build up their cloud infrastructure. So they were getting all the VC money. Now it's all going to NVIDIA. So uh, times change, but the, the trends don't necessarily change. Uh, speaking of times, listeners, we are still popping off hot and hard out here. You know, it is. A truncated holiday week. You might be forgiven for thinking nothing's popping off this week, but you would be wrong. We got Zoom today after the bell. Have they recovered from the pandemic? Is it all over for them? We'll find out today after the bell. Tomorrow we got Best Buy. People have been writing them off for years. They're still around. Dick Sporting Goods, Burlington, Nordstrom's, Urban Outfitters. So a wide swath of brick and mortar retail tomorrow. A Wednesday, we got Neo. We got Target. We got all kinds of stuff popping off after the bell out there. And then uh, all kinds of fun. Uh, getting out there today, we had Bath and Body Works, hot off the presses, my friends over there at Orats on the earnings move results reports. Uh, they were at 3071 going into their announcement. They were pricing in 9.6%. They had delivered, as of this report, nearly 17%. So yet another banger report, listeners. That's probably why this season is so freaking ridiculous <laughs> right now. The season hanging out at 113%. Actually, one notch below our long-term average of 114, which shows you how frothy that 114 number is. I mean, go back a couple of years to the, to the post, immediate post-pandemic era. You could see how much lower the seasons were averaging. 114 is explosive. Of course, if you want to see all that data for yourselves, we give it to you all for free because we like you. The Options Insider. Click on the Options News and Articles tab to begin your journey to the dark side. As we begin our journey to the odd side, it is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, time to get weird, time to get wild. Mr. Rock Lobster, put on your detective hat. We're going to do some sleuthing out here today. We're going to figure out what the heck's going on in some of these names. Uh, a couple of names are really just popping off out here today, listeners. 
Uh, let's start in everyone's favorite underwear brand, a.k.a. Hanes Brands International, ticker symbol HBI. You know them. You love them. All sorts of undies on the offering there. 858, up about a nickel today, so not exactly a banger day. They've had about a 30-odd cent range on the day, so they've moved a little bit, but not super explosive. Not certainly enough to justify this volume we're seeing. On the year, though, you know, who needs AI when underwear is up 133%? <laughs> it was 367 a year ago. So if you just bought Hanes Brands Inc. and sat on it this year, you're laughing all the way to the bank. My goodness, this thing's been mostly straight up. Very few uh, downturns. A little bit of a quiet period between April and July when I hung out around five bucks for a while. That's kind of about it. And it's been straight up pretty much outside of those two periods. So popping off this year, man, AI shmei. It's all about undies, apparently. And uh, the question also is, is what the heck's going on out there in Haynes brand? It's a wild one. It's a wild one to put it mildly. You can call it a call palooza. As of the start of the show, there was well over 10 times their ADV has, had already traded in this name today, listeners. So folks are popping off. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what's about the usual suspects? What about, you know, XDiv, all this fun out here? And uh, the answer is no, it's not going XDiv, but it is at a 52-week price highs. So maybe, that's, maybe that's what's triggering all this love. Maybe the algos are just flocking in. Because whatever it is, Mr. Rock Lobster, we just saw a, just a call palooza going up out here first we noticed uh, the biggest print of the day 5,806 of the July 12s going up pretty much lifting the offer for 39 cents and that was opening and again I said the stock was about 860 so they got a long ways to go to hit the 12 handle if you like something a little bit closer to the fire we also saw and again none of this went up spread but it all went up within you know a few minutes of each other so it does seem like it's at least somewhat related paper. We saw 4,033 of the July 9s going up for a buck and a half. So could certainly be some vertical action, but it's not a, even close to one to one. It's So it's a funky ratio if they are doing it. Then we saw, looks like a few minutes separate from that, we saw 4,016 of the July 9s going up for a buck 45. So they did about 8,000 then of the July 9s. And then just for good measure, in between all that, they did 2,500 of the July 10s. For 90 cents lifting the offer there so kind of a weird one mr rock lobster when we see kind of an explosion of flow like this i sometimes also like to just look at all the most actives kind of lined up for the day so i can maybe see maybe in totality there is a story that is being told there that isn't told by the individual prints sometimes they're legging in a little bit here a little bit there it's hard to see piecemeal what the heck they're up to and if you look at total coming into the start of the show we had about twelve thousand four hundred of the july nines going up against about 11,300 of the July 12. So could be some vertical action. Those were all opening. And then also opening was about 6,000 of the July 10s. So they could also be doing the old reverse butterfly, two by one by two, Mr. Rock Lobster. Two of the nines, one of the tens, and then two of the 12s, because why not? That's the way you'd play an underwear brand, isn't it, Mr. Rock Lobster? What is lighting up your tape out here? What are folks up to here in this Underwear craziness, Mr. Rockwell. <laughs> um, when I think of Haynes, the first trade idea that comes to mind is not the some kind of funky inverse butterfly. Inverse fly doesn't leap off the page to you. <laughs> I, I got to say it's not the first trade. You know, when I when I first saw the volume, it, it, it looked like it could be just a roll higher, like from the nines to the twelves. Um, but both the nines are opening and the twelves. Yeah, so clearly not. You know, um, maybe somebody's riding a gain, uh, uh, like a slingshot, so they own some stock and then they sell the nine twelve um, for a dollar. Um, I mean, that's that's a possibility. Although you're selling a lot more nines than you're buying the twelves, so, so really, really, that's just. A, it's it's a bizarre trade on its own, um, and if you add up roughly the if you add up the the tens and the twelves, you roughly get the volume on the nines. I don't know what I mean, somebody's doing some kind of upper upper trading math there that I I actually I can't figure. 
<laughs> I can't figure out. I could see if if you traded this as some kind of a you know selling a spread against your stock or something. Um, but why you would sell, you know, when the stock has just gone up three or four bucks, like why bother to sell the the nine calls that are you know why why bother to sell the at the money strike? Um, with seven or eight months to go out there. Like, I don't, like maybe the yield was calling them instead of, uh, you know, like, well, I'll just take the 10%, but man, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot of work for what, 10% or, you know, I, the yield is good, obviously. It would be a good yield trade, but I don't, I don't get it at all, to be quite honest. I'm just saying. Yeah, I didn't have uh, inverse flies and underwear names on my, on my bingo card when I woke up today, Mr. Rock Lobster. But that's what we're getting. We deal with what the market gives us, listeners. And this is some funky paper here in good old Haynes. If you like a very similar explosion of flow in a... This is a, a newcomer. This is Rigetti Computing Corp. Inc. Then we got you covered here. Ticker symbol RGTI. This one, if Haynes was a little bit too rich for your blood at 8 bucks and change, how about Rigetti? 270 Look at this one, up nearly a buck today, 95 cents or 55% just today. It's had a range of a high of 337, a low of 237. So exactly a $1 range on a mostly sub $3 name. Yeah, that's a, this one's a banger out here, listeners. If you're wondering, they develop quantum integrated circuits for quantum computers out here. Why is it popping hard out here today? Well, looks like, a good old more buyers and sellers kid out here today. A worth noting, this is another one almost identical to the Haynes in about 10 and a half X their ADV going up in Rigetti. So eerily similar numbers, which is kind of weird. Uh, you'll see when we start breaking it down. Let's look on the year really quickly. On the year, it's been a pretty good year, as you might imagine, when you're up 55% in one day, it's going to make your year pretty good. And they're up 158% on the year. They were a buck pretty much exactly last November. Uh, they rallied once before, got up to about two and a quarter in March, and then they gave it all back up. If you bought it in March this year, you were wearing it. It was trading 66 cents back in September. So, man, this thing was circling the bowl. And then even before Halloween, October 16th, it started ticking up, got up to about a buck. By Halloween, it was a buck and a half. And then it was a buck 30. Actually, I'd given some up post-election, which is kind of weird. And then it shot right back up again today. So, apparently, it's a very volatile quantum integrated circuits manufacturer and mr rock lobster the stock was 60 cents just a few months ago it's not stopping folks from piling in to some upside man they're just swinging for all the fences out here first off we noticed a block of three thousand of the jan fours for 50 cents so yes again one month out of the money call this money could easily go away trading about the value of the stock the forever call a few months ago and then we have about 3,000 of the Jan 2s. These are 2026, though. Trading for a buck 76. Man, the stock then was two and a half bucks. So they were 50 cents in the money. Still paying about a buck and a quarter over. That's pretty rich. That is a 156 ball. You're getting some duration there. And again, this is also a name that's uh, kind of hard to borrow. So there's some liquidity concerns. I could certainly see the options being used as a surrogate for some of the liquidity. Then 2,000 more of the Jan 2s. Then 2,200 of the Feb seven halves for 60 cents. And then some Jan two halves, 1,600 times for a buck 88. So Mr. Rock Lops, this is another one. It's kind of a bit of a, a murder mystery out here. What, what the hell is going up? As of the start of the segment, 7,700 of the Dece fives. These didn't even make it into our initial print, but they, those have traded as well today. Those are all opening. 6,800 of the Dece twos. Those are probably closing. So that's probably a bit of a roll. And then 5,100 of the Jan 4s going up. Those are opening. 4,700 of the Dees 2 halves also opening. And 4,500 of the Jan 3s going up today, Mr. Rock Lobster. So, man, they are, they are coming for some upside in RGTI, sir. What's say? Um, I Actually, when I saw the, the, uh, the ticker, I wanted to call it Rigatoni. <laughs> it does have that feel about it, doesn't it? It does have that. It does have that feel. Um, so it's almost, it kind of has the feeling of, it's a meme stock, let's just buy everything and see what happens. I'm starting to, because like, I, there's a couple of stocks uh, that I trade, uh, like RCAT and, um, 
And I remember that, that nuclear reactor stock, SMR, like they've just become treating machines uh, because uh, for a variety of reasons. But um, I, I, we've been looking at those in, uh, in capital gains and option pit. And, uh, and it's just, I don't know what Rigetti does, but all of a sudden it, it, has, it has come back from the dead. A lot of these stocks that um, were something and then died and then they come back from the dead. So it's hard with all the volume to parse, but it, it just looks like, ugh, you know, they want to, some of this could be rolling some calls up just because they get, get the banger, but I mean, you know as well as I do when they're starting to buy the seven and a halfs for sixty cents in a two dollar stock or whatever. It's a little, it, it's a little nutty. Speaking of nutty, we'll get out of here on this one, then we'll get to Uncle Mike here just really quickly because we're already coming up against. We had a lot of fun with Dockin and Highlander at the start of the show. Uh, let's go out to Cooler Technology Group Inc. Ticker symbol K U L R, maybe color. Uh, this is a newcomer as well. Trading sixty eight cents today, up thirty four cents just in the last five days. Up 23 cents today. It's had a range of 85 cents on the high end, 60 cents on the low end. A year ago, it got down to as low as a dime back in February. This thing's been all over the place. They just say they make unparalleled safety and innovation. So <laughs> read into that what you will out here. But what caught my eye and the eye of Sauron today, listeners, somebody, again, the stock was a dime not too long ago. The stock is 68 cents right now. Someone came in this morning with the stock at 83 cents and paid 35 cents, Mr. Rock Lobster, for the April 1s, 2,500 times. Again, the stock is 67 cents right now. If you want the forever call, you can get as much of it as you want, Mr. Rock Lobster, for 67 cents. Just tick down from 68. This person bought 2,500 of the April 1s for 35 cents, sir. Riddle me that. Uh, I Again, it, it, the, um, the Viceroy has, he's, his head is, his hat is blown right off his head when he sees that. I am glad he is not on the show. He might have a heart attack. He might not survive that print. That might be the most viceroy offending print I've seen in some time. <laughs> All the stock you want, 65 cents or so. Nope, I'm going to pay 35 cents for out of the money April ones that could go the way of the dodo at any moment. My goodness. What are we doing here, listeners? Maybe Uncle Mike will have a whole strategy block all about that. Let's find out. It's time to unleash the beast. That is Uncle Mike. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. All right, Uncle Mike, I'm hoping you have a strategy block about how I could buy stocks for 35, or excuse me, calls that go away soon for 35 cents when the stock itself is 65. Riddle me that one, sir. <laughs> don't think I could quite pull that one off. That's kind of a tall ask. But what I do want to say is, or what I do want to go through today is an expansion a little bit from last week when we talked about how perhaps if uh, you have some stocks that are increased in value, you may want to sell a covered call on them. But with that, let's say that you have a stock that's appreciated in value and you don't really want to sell a covered call on it just because of the fact that you think it could go higher. But on the flip side, you know the stock is high. You know the market is high. And, that, and by no, meaning you're the only one that knows it. Um, if you have that feeling, what can you do? Well, I want to talk about a vertical put spread. In today's market, if you are concerned of the fact that the markets are near all-time highs and you still think that we could go higher, but you don't want to be that guy, and that guy, meaning the one that took no action when the market was at all-time highs and just watched the market go back down again, you're concerned with being that guy, then a put spread might be for you. What you could do is you could buy a uh, front month or maybe a two month at the money put option on the stock or on the index as a whole, whatever works best for you, and simultaneously sell another put option at a lower strike price against the same put that you bought. For example, let's say that you own the 60, a stock that's at $60 a share and you're concerned that might go back down to 50 or the low 50s again, not quite sure. But you're very confident the stock's not going to go belly up. You're not concerned with it just going to zero and that happening. Well, what you could do is you could perhaps buy a 57 half, 52 half put spread, meaning you're long the 57 half put and then you simultaneously sell the 52 half put. 
And by doing that, let's say you pay a dollar for it, what you've done is you've created protection from 57 half down to 52 half. So if you do get that pullback that you're concerned with, you are protecting yourself from $4 of that. Something to consider when markets are at an all time high and you don't feel the need or the desire, whatever the case may be, to sell a covered call. And I'm going to end the strategy block today with my annual Thanksgiving joke to where I actually am gonna give some advice on actually what to buy and sell. Now, with that being said, pumpkin futures, you should have sold them by now. You actually, uh, if, if you didn't sell your pumpkin futures by now, then uh, you're not doing very well because Halloween is over. Christmas tree futures, they're really good to go long right now because the demand for Christmas trees is likely going to spike over the next few weeks. But stay away from Turkey because this week they have no future. And that's a wrap. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. Ah, yes, the annual one joke from Uncle Mike <laughs> that we can all recite by memory right now. Listen, let's go out and see how things are looking out here in Around the Block really quickly before we get to what everyone's keeping an eye on for the week. Our, our raging debate. On is Highlander the worst sequel of all time? It was 100% no. We had some good write-ins, like I said, Caddyshack and others. Uh, now it's moving a little bit. Roughly a third say yes and about two-thirds saying no. I'm definitely in the yes camp. Maybe I just had such lofty expectations. I enjoyed the first one so much that to, to, to see what they did with the second. <laughs> Nigh on heresy, listeners. You want to be let down quite a bit. Go First off, go watch the first one. It's awesome. And then... Maybe you skip the second one. You avoid that letdown in your life. Who wants to seek that out? There's enough disappointment and sadness in the world. You don't need to seek out bad movies. <laughs> but make your voice heard on our poll. Speaking of our poll right now, uh, this is kind of in the spirit of Uncle Mike. We put this question as our question of the week for this truncated holiday week. Again, it seems like we've been flirting with 6K a few times, and then we kind of give up the ghost. I was joking with Uncle Mike on the show last week that he may have been the kiss of death for it. In fact, I'm going to say the opposite of his saying, this would be the best time in history to buy some out-of-the-money puts. You can buy the highest strikes you could ever buy for the lowest levels ever in the SPX right now. The cheapest time to buy puts. <laughs> Just to stick the fork in Uncle Mike a little bit. But we thought we'd, we'd ask you that question this week. We keep struggling to maintain that 6K level. Will the SPX close above 6,000 at the end of the year? Note the at the end of the year there, listeners. I gave you four choices. Heck yes, hell no. Who cares I'm in crypto or who cares I'm in cash? Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, we will start with you. Do you think we'll start, or excuse me, do you think S&P will close above 6,000 at the end of the year? B, what do you think our audience is voting for? And C, what are you keeping an eye on for a full week? Because remember, we're off on Thursday, sir. Oh, um, uh, I think we'll close over 6,000. I think the audience says we're going to close over 6,000. And what I'm keeping our eye out, uh, we do have a, we do have a, I think we have a, couple of PPI, CPI numbers or something like that coming out at the end of the week, but mostly just if we can get above 6,000 and stay there before um, before uh, Thanksgiving, which I think we're going to do. Well, interesting. We could change our question of the week then to be, will we get there by Thanksgiving? But we did not. We said by the end of the year. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you. Do you think well, Chloe, I think I know what your answer is. You're kind of legally obligated to say yes. Do you think our audience agrees or disagrees with you? And then, B, what are you keeping an eye on until next Monday, sir? Well, as much as I want to say, who cares? I'm all in all crypto. I do have to say that I think they're going to be above 6,000. But I do think uh, for these ne these next uh, six weeks, whatever we have left, or the five weeks, whatever we have left in the trading year, I do think 6,000 is going to be a tough nut to crack. I think we're going to kind of act as a magnet. Uh, on it, uh, as we tend to do a lot of times with the S&P 500. We'll be at 59.90 one day, 60.05 the next, and around there. But I do think we will break out, and I will say 60.48 will be our close on the S&P this year. And uh, in terms of what I'm watching for the rest of this week, aside from the turkey futures that I think we need to short, uh, watching to see if buyers come in at uh, gold and silver. Uh, curious to see that as uh, we do have some sellers coming in here today on the holiday week. All right, let's see what you folks 
have up your sleeves for us to hear listeners as you're laughing yourself hysterical over Uncle Mike's Turkey Futures joke. Uh, right now, and now it's changing again. We're close to 50-50 now here for you folks out here in our Highland 2, Islander 2 best or worst sequel of all time uh, with some good write-ins. I, ca- I guess for a lot of people out there, Caddyshack might be more resonant again for me. Highlander 2 struck me to the quick. That was a painful one. <laughs> but what is? Maybe that's another good follow-up question. What is the sequel that really just, just wounded you? <laughs> Such a terrible sequel. <laughs> a follow-up to a beloved film that maybe you, you adored as a child or whatever the case may be and then just didn't live up to the, to the hype. Right now, our audience is kind of split. Uh, get over there. This is the flash poll. That'll be done pretty quick. Our actual question of the week right now, listeners, will the S&P close above 6,000 at the end of the year? Right now, 73.3% are not in the Matt Amberson or some of our other, not in the Carly Garner, not in some of the other camps out there, but they're in the Rock Lobster, who's weirdly bullish, and, of course, Uncle Mike camps. Of Heck, yes, 73.3%. 20% say hell no, and 6.7% said, who cares, I'm in cash. Uh, nobody going the Uncle Mike route of they're all in on crypto yet, but, again, the, the day is young, and we'll be in on crypto all in in a little bit on the crypto rundown, so join us for that in a little bit. If you want to learn more about all things Rock Lobster, as he is still dealing with his technological difficulty at least he made the whole show that's a good thing then head on over to optionpit.com to learn more also 888 trade 01 to learn more mr uncle mike sir do you have a fancy phone number that folks can call if they want to get in touch with you well go to my website at stcharleswealth.com book an appointment and then by all means i will be happy to talk with you and uh, if you're looking for a financial advisor who is not afraid of the option product Final note, I will go another route. The best sequel of all time, I would say, is The Empire Strikes Back. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. That's a pretty popular one. You know, Godfather 2 is decent, too. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Empire, it's kind of hard to beat that because that really just is is the culmination of everything that's going on in Star Wars there, right? Uh, so yeah, kind of hard to argue against them. But maybe, that's, maybe that's a fun follow-up. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that on a Twitter poll unless we give you some suggestions. But yeah, it might be a fun for the second half of the week. Everyone's gorged themselves and is drunk on tryptophan, listeners. Maybe that might be a fun question of the week. Check out Uncle Mike, StCharlesWealth.com. While you're checking stuff out, support the folks that support the content that's coming at you week after week over here. Head on over to TastyTrade.com slash podcast to learn more about what they have cooking over there. A lot of fun stuff. A lot of great personalities over there. A lot of them have been on the network over there. Tell them we sent you. They'll be happy to hear about that. And hey, it keeps the flow of content coming to you. Speaking of that flow, listeners, it is a truncated holiday week. But don't worry. We still got more stuff coming at you. Got the crypto rundown coming up in a little bit. Man, there's some hot stuff popping off there. Even if you're not that crypto curious, you're going to want to hear this stuff. So tune in for the crypto rundown to sit next on your device of choice, wherever you're listening to this. Tomorrow, no rest for the wicked. We're bat hot and heavy with the Oracle New Hampshire, putting that guy to work again for a little bit of the advisor's options action. Also got some special guest stars. And if that's not enough, I'm back one final time for the week here, coming back for a little bit of OBC action on Wednesday. I'm not leaving you high and dry, listen. We've got you covered here. Then, of course, the holiday on Thursday and Friday. And then back again on Monday, another episode of the Option Block. Have a great holiday, everybody, and stay safe out there. The Option Block is brought to you by Tasty Trade. You take the unbeaten path. You root for the away team. You wear shorts in winter. You don't put ketchup on a hot dog. So why wouldn't you trade with a broker that lets you go your own way? Tasty Trade. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose. You trade. Chart moves with hundreds of custom indicators. Stare at the candles till you see them in your sleep. See it, click it, trade it on mobile, web, or desktop. Supported by a trade desk that knows how traders think. The data, the tools, the knowledge. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker, dealer, and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. 